I'm here to inform my audience about the general experience of working from home while working for an employer. I will discuss the history of working from home and the advantages and disadvantages that comes with it. Working from home has been an option for decades now, such as three days in the office, two days of work from home, or fully remote, with the exception of company-wide meetings, also outside of traditional nine to five, freelancers who make their money by working for themselves in their homes. These are examples of worker company agreements very few enjoyed, often referred to as telecommuting. Though there are differences between working from home and telecommuting, for this speech, I'll be focusing on the general nature, nature of working out of the office. With the growth and accessibility of information technology, fewer people are finding themselves in industries that involve operating heavy machinery. Laptops are smaller and powerful enough to fit all of your work's data. For the last two years, working from home has been essential in the fight to reduce unnecessary spreading of the coronavirus. Many had to adjust to no longer seeing their colleagues in person, a change or a lack of retire, and parents juggle their everyday work with their children's distance learning setup. I am qualified to speak about this topic because the company I worked for at the start of the pandemic went completely remote. I worked from home for a year before leaving the company. Additionally, I will be presenting some empirical data that I found for further research. I will cover three main points about working from home. The first point will be about the early account of working from home. The second point will be about the advantages, advantages for employees and employers. The third point will be about the disadvantages for employee and employers. Now on to the history of working from home. Christine Zalazar wrote in a 1998 article titled, Technology as Enabler, Keeping Work Distinct from Working While Working at Home. When an employee works at home, the projects and activities become mixed and distinction between home and work becomes blurred. In the past, industries where people worked from home relied little on instant communication. According to France Bellinger, they typically have a communication, communi communication link to their office. Now we have many communication options to choose from and many job requirements can be fulfilled with the equipment we have at home. This leads me to my second point about the positives that comes with working from home. Workers can find a middle ground between not being able to make it to the office, but still being able to complete their work's tasks. For example, Joe Brewis says, because every woman's experience of menopause is unique to her, working from home means individual women can take the necessary steps to ease their specific symptoms. In a 2020 article, The Health and Social Economic Impact on Menopausal Women of Working from Home. It is stated in an article written by T.E. Bertros et al. and published in Strategic Finance titled, Using Telecommuting to Improve the Bottom Line, the benefits definitely seem to outweigh the cost, cash management. After the first year, only recurring costs are the collective collect connectivity expenses, ISDN and phone line, which run about $200 per month per employee. Ignoring long distance calls and computer upgrading every three to four years, telecommuting could provide an annual savings of $7,400 per telecommuter. That is $9,800 in-house versus $2,400 telecommuting. This study was conducted during the telecommuting pilot program by a Midwestern company. My third point will be about some concerns when it comes to working from home. Remote workers will need to be prepared to adjust to these changes. Virtual work will also require resilience as employees negotiate techno stress, feelings of isolation, spillover between work and home, and other challenges that's unique to working offsite, said by K.S. McDonald, L.M. Height, and K.W. O'Connor in a 2022 article titled, Developing Sustainable Careers for Remote Workers, an article published by Human Resource Development International. Working from home has its challenges for, many, for managers as well. Not only is it difficult for managers to measure performance of employees who are out of sight, 
employees also have anxiety about whether their absence in the workplace will cause them to be passed up for promotions as their hard work and contributions may not have been recognized, says G. Manicuri and T. Pinkerton in a 2003 article titled Managing Telecommuters, Opportunities and Challenges. In conclusion, working from home has been around for a while and you should know that it will be around for the foreseeable future. I covered three main points in my speech. In the first point, I examined the history of working from home. In my second point, I examined the benefits of working from home. And in my third point, I examined the concerns of working from home. In the past, people who work from home were more isolated due to the lack of access to communication mediums. Now real-time communication with colleagues and advanced technology promotes greater possibilities for a wide range of workers and employees including women experiencing symptoms of menopause or anyone living with disabilities, people can benefit from working from home in an environment that they control. Companies can pass on the financial burden of office space and utilities to their employees. But keep in mind, working from home can make employees feel isolated and manage employees' productivities is a challenge. 